Hello, everybody. Welcome back to G for G Games for Gamers. Today, we're gonna do a wrap up of the week in Marvel Avengers Alliance. But before we get into that, let's deal with some news elsewhere for Marvel Avengers Universe. We've got two items to deal with. One is the shutdown of Marvel Avengers Alliance Tactics. You can check out the previous video here on G4G for, G for my opinion on Matt Mott, Marvel Avengers Alliance Tactics, why it failed, and why I'm kind of okay with that. But, in other news, so I have it on this page over here. Can you guess why I have it here on this page? They have announced that somebody is going to be playing a Marvel Avengers Alliance hero in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show that will be returning on September 23rd. Now, I completely admit I have never watched the show. I kind of didn't have that much interest in it when I was like, oh, it's not really going to be about the heroes. Oh, it's probably going to be boring. Everybody that I've heard has said that it's actually really, really good, and I think I will give it a chance when it starts up in September, and the reason why I'm here is they have announced that Adrian Pilecki is going to be playing Bobby Morse, a.k.a. Barbara Morse, a.k.a. The Mockingbird. You might be wondering, who is Adrian Pilecki? Well, Adrian Pilecki was the extremely pretty-eyed, hot, hot chick from the second G.I. Joe movie. She played Lady J, not to be confused with Baroness or Scarlet in the first one. She was Lady J in the second one. And a little bit of trivia for you guys. She also was in a movie with Thor. Yes, that's right. Adrian Pilecki was in Red Dawn, the remake, with... Mark Helmsworth, who played Thor, he was the uh, essentially the main leader, the Patrick Swayze character of the remake of Red Dawn. Red Dawn, of course, was a Cold War era '80s movie from back in my generation. I grew up with that, with like Patrick Swayze, C. Thomas Howell, uh, a young Charlie Sheen, the lady who had done. Um, McFly's mother in the first Back to the Future. It was actually the girl that uh, he goes back to try to get George McFly to uh, have the dance with. And her name is... She was Caroline in the City. Um, I, for some reason, have completely forgotten her name. Uh, but yeah, so she was in that original one. And then we had the remake in the uh, the 2000s that had Thor and had now the lady who is going to be playing Mockingbird. So, what are we looking at this week? Well, we are looking at a new simulator challenge and it is to get the movie suit for Gamora. Uh, oh, hey, sweet. I have regen one of my challenges and I have actually another challenge waiting for me. So, uh, there's five simulators for the Gamora set. Solo, which was just simply against a blaster. Uh, multiple enemies, which was against another tactician and a blaster. The increasing evasion and attack. I kind of don't remember this one. It really wasn't too bad. And my next one up is the score challenge. Now, how I have set her up for this... As my Gamora has been uh, un-ISO'd for quite some time, so I basically used the PKB method and gave her the weaker form of those ISOs because she's about ready to train. And um, I had was right around the level at the time, and I, I have since leveled, so I didn't want to slap some gems in her that I was immediately going to out level so I just gave her some of the fatties but most of the same type except for these two chaotic and I gave her the savant the shield ISO 
for the simulator and it seems to be working out well now of course you can see the key for the rocket raccoon ones and the drax ones was to give them the buff equals health one uh she doesn't have that so i gave her the shield one and that that held up pretty well in the multiple combat she took an entire first round of hits before it went away so i'm going to be looking forward to completing the simulator tonight and we will be getting the movie suit, the Zoe Soldano suits. And that's kind of another reason why I didn't want to slap some ISOs in her. Because I may go with the suit. Now, what would I go with in terms of the suit here? Would I go Infiltrator or would I go Tactician? Well, I would leave her as a Tactician um, at all times. Simply for the health bonus in PvP. Uh, my... Infiltrators do pretty well, so I don't really feel the need to bump those up. But I probably would get the Infiltrator suit. Attacks by Guardians of the Galaxy are guaranteed to hit. All allies gain the True Strike, and she's still the Master Assassin. So, she's got beautiful attack, pretty poor defense, amazing accuracy, amazing evasion... And her health and her stamina are pretty tits. Well, you don't really build for stamina. Um, I think I would immediately buy the Infiltrator version, but leave her in her standard Tactician version, and probably would not buy the Tactician version straight out. Um, I actually kind of like this sprite a little better than this right over here. This one, it's... It adds some meanness to her. It gives her more of that most dangerous woman in the galaxy look. But I kind of think those ones actually look a little bit prettier, sort of. Like, the face isn't as, as harsh or stern. But um, So that means we have a movie suit for Rocket Raccoon. And for this one, I will be getting the Generalist. And probably slap him with the Morale Boost ISO. And he will probably make a decent team up with Star-Lord due to all the extra attacks. Uh, we had the movie suit for Drax. And uh, who would be coming up next? Well, I believe that pretty much leaves Groot as coming up. And then Star-Lord will get his non-movie suit. I wonder what they would add to him. Uh, they also refactored Gamora a little bit. They swapped the Demoralizing Shout and Whirlwind, and Mortal Strike now adds Bleeding. And uh, Whirlwind still has the Mangle and the Demise. Execute still has the Fatal Blow. Demoralizing Shout is finally subtle. Everybody cowers. Everybody despairs. 50% chance at everybody having Doom. So, you against a blaster as a tactician could very easily lead with Mortal Strike, get the extra turn, and then Demoralizing Shout everybody, and then on the next turn, Whirlwind, or if you were facing some people that uh, really had buffs on the other side, just run the Whirlwind, and unfortunately this is a debuff, so Snappy Service will never help that. Uh, as an Infiltrator, we know she'll probably counter with Moral Strike. So, it could be a decent thing to open up with Demoralizing or Whirlwind. And hopefully get counters applying the Moral Strike. Um, I think she's a little less powerful in her movie suit than some of the others. I mean, the Guaranteed Crit, I like a little bit more. The chance to counterattack with Opportunity... The Everybody Bleeds, I think those are coming in a little bit stronger. So what else did we see here for this week in Marvel Avengers Alliance? Well, we are coming up to the close of the Spec Ops over here. I have the Gloves of Tritigo first. I do not have the Blink Boots, but they are lowered down. I do want this Galactic Crusher. Uh, I do have to farm some of my comrades over here with ISOs. We also have a new item on the store for the gold. It is the Wretched Defender, which I actually believe just was out recently. One of the mobile versions. It is one enemy. Melee and slashing. No cooldown. Low top end damage. 
but is guaranteed to hit, protects allies from single target attacks if the attacker has Sin. 50% chance to counter single target attacks if the attacker has Sin. Guaranteed hit, Penance, low chance on hit to consume all Sin on the target to cause additional damage. Sin reduces defense, so I mean it has some synergy with a few characters. Uh, obviously Ghost Rider, who is probably a little bit more viable with his ISO, but, you know, Ghost Rider's day is done. Would I call this a buy? No. I actually would not call this a buy. I am not tempted to get it. I think it's too situational. Um, and I'm going to save my money this time. Not really going to go for that. The other thing we have this week is a release of one of the next Inhumans to go along with Black Bolt and Thane. It is Black Bolt's wife. She's Medusa. You can see another video on my channel to see a more in-depth look on her, but I've got her at 5. Very, very close to 6. That's what I'm going to be working towards tonight. I've applied uh, the Lingering ISO to her. So she now does Sting. Her hips... Look at those legs. Those legs actually slide up the hips like they're not jointed to it. Uh, so, I have her splitting hairs at the moment, which is Deadly Crit Exploit Stuns tied up. I have Headbang, which is Subdue, which is melee attacks do 40% less damage, cannot crit, counts as impaired, and Winded, which prevents follow-up attacks. So, right there, she can shut down Scrappers. And she also has a targeted tanking ability now. Somebody like Groot will attempt to tank everything. Somebody like Medusa will only tank what you apply splitting hairs to. That means if there's a tactician on the other side and she gets her counters rolling, she could essentially tank everybody on the other side if she happens to counter them. The next ability that I'll be getting soon here is Rocking Locks, which is a impaired for ranged. And it causes incapacitation, which she exploits over here. I have been running her. I was running her with Black Bolt. I was also running her with Hogun, simply because he's close to a level over here. Um, these two didn't work out too bad. They have absolutely no synergy, and they both have the Infiltrator weakness. But uh, it was kind of fun especially with the uh, path of uh, mastery, having the scrapper, and the fact that we have Way of the Warrior and the Elixir of Recovery increases damage dealt by counterattacks and follow-ups, so that helps her a little bit. Honestly, I'm looking forward to some combat between her and She-Hulk. I think would be really nice. And then her level 9 is Bad Hair Day, guaranteed hit, true strike, all enemies are tied up, all enemies are mangled, and all enemies are constricted, but it starts on a cooldown, so maybe she's got some uh, synergy with Gamora, who can apply some mangles early on, and then she can take over and apply the mangles, and Gamora can do other things. So that's what we've got there, and the last item that we're going to talk about is not going to be the store because the store we've talked about in a recent video and there's nothing particularly new here however pvp pvp have uh gotten done with some changes and you can see that i'm starting to now get paired with people around my actual agent level and armory bonuses and that's wow that was a big loss there um if you can see here i continually fought a lot of the same people like i, I fought this wadux a bunch of times uh i was getting a lot of duplicates when i was fighting uh i have run into a lot of pesty defensive teams which has been annoying um, but I am finding that I'm getting not paired with the 300s anymore, but people who are around my agent level, like this guy was 271, and around my armory bonuses, so they have tried to fix that a little bit. So it's getting a little bit more fair. People are still claiming that there's a, a decent amount of disparity out there. Uh, let's see, what did he attack me with? Bashenga, Synthetic, Golden. Not, eh, 
not the best loadout, but um, must have had some unluckiness there. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting more fairness in terms of the people that I'm playing. I'm not fighting the amazing 300s, but I'm not fighting the level 100s either, so the battles have been a struggle. I have opened up a ticket with Playdom for a bug with the Mark of the Brotherhood, as I've definitely confirmed it. Mark of the Brotherhood. If your agent goes first in combat, and even if you do not use the Mark of the Brotherhood first, I have snappy service. That would mean that this gets turned into a quick action. But if my agent is the very first person to act in combat, using Mark of the Brotherhood negates snappy service and my turn ends. Now that I know that, I have to watch for it. So that means in my opening, I have two things to watch for. If I'm first, I have to avoid using Mark of the Brotherhood. If the Mystic is out, I have to avoid using the Neuro Purge. Um, Neuro Purge is pretty handy because it prevents counterattacks. But honestly, I may swap this out simply because of the fact that um, my agent is the only one who's not going to be stealthy. And with the Mystic over here, I might decide to put in Warbringer. I might decide to put in Coulson's Revenge. Uh, however, Pressure Points does aid in the cube's final attacks. And, you know, Dizzy, Exposed, Slow, and Weaken are nice. When Despair goes out from this, it's very handy because then that means Angel doesn't have to apply it. And his first round could be his AoE Nano Plague, which is a huge key for my team. The Remove buffs not really my thing because he's doing that essentially from Nano Plague. There are several things that I wish the Nano Plague would affect, like class bonuses, like um, Falcon giving his team the extra turn. I wish Nano Plague would uh, work against that. Pressure points applying exhausted. Uh, you know, I really may change this a little bit here. I don't have to worry about the Magneto too much. He's around a little bit, but... Uh, you know, I could go to the Abative Helmet, which is a quick action, and I, you know, that'll reduce some melee damage to me. I could go with the Beyond Corp Driver for some counters. I could, I don't want the Combat Communicator, actually. I would be better off with the Neurotrope in this case. You know, I could go Neurotrope. I could go Calculated Response which would give me the uh, chance to reduce damage, not be crit. I could get the rising up off of the cufflink, but unfortunately that would burn my snappy service. Uh, the Laprov over here, which has several things that could be good. Um, I have the Kinetic Energy Blade, which can have a chance to counter Cosmic Energy, which protects me. Don't need to really restore stamina too much because of the fact that um, I get that from Psylocke doing her abilities. You know, I, I really may go Neurotrope instead. Uh, uh, yeah, there's satellite support so that nobody's stealthy against me, but... I started seeing not too many Quicksilvers, and it was more Pesty Beast and Deadpool. Uh, could go the E-Regulator. Uh, a shield, all allies, you know. This is something that can't be used, so I don't have to worry about it when exhausted. and Kind of narrows my focus a little bit. Could go to Techno-Organic Endoskeleton to prevent a couple of debuffs, including Psychic Attacks and... Um, Solar Storm to make sure other people can't dodge, but I don't have to worry about that because of Psylocke. And honestly, this will get countered if an Infiltrator is on the other side. So, I mean, there are some possibilities. I could go for the Savage Spear simply to protect myself. Nanite Gun to protect myself. There's, there's a couple of things I could do. Even the Chaos Shot to kind of add to things a little bit. Um... I actually might run another scroll because there are some well it's kind of dicey with pesty being around but um see that wouldn't be a quick action to use that one there is one 
That is a quick action built in, and that is this one. Blessing restores health every turn, takes reduced damage. You know, that's actually not a bad idea with the pesties running around. I might go to this scroll because uh, of the reduced damage and everything like that. So, you know, there we go. That's what we've got this week. We have Adrian Pilecki, who's going to be being Mockingbird in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We have the Gamora movie suits. We have Drax, who apparently I have to pull from a ship over here. So he's ready to go. That's good. And let's get a moneymaker in there. Uh, they We have played on fixing some of the PvP a little bit. And we have the Spec Ops coming to an end. Uh, I should have another punch on the card when I get done with the Gamora simulator over here. And, uh, yep, yeah, that's about it. So stay tuned on Games for Gamers. Go back in time and look at the video on the Marvel Avengers Alliance Tactics Shutdown. And stay tuned for maybe some Arcade videos. Take care, everybody.